Hello everyone. This is part 2 of the Super Pro Designer video series that covers the tutorial that can be found in chapter 2 of the Super Pro Designer manual. Please make sure to watch part 1 of this tutorial before proceeding with this video. Also, remember to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of Super Pro Designer. Let's now continue where we left off in part 1. Therefore, the next step in the model is to initialize the operations that were added to the two unit procedures. Let's begin with the reactor. To access the operations, select the unit procedure, right click on it, and select operation data. Let's begin with the first operation by clicking on it. Through this dialog, you can access or modify the simulation data for an operation such as the operating conditions, scheduling data, emission specifications, and labor-related information. To initialize this operation, let's begin by selecting the stream that we'll use for the charge. This is done by using the drop-down list at the top of the tab. For this operation, select the stream named heptane. Next, let's specify the amount we want to charge. Notice that you can add a component based on mass or volume. For this example, we'll need to charge 1200 liters of this solvent. We can now proceed to specify the stream's composition by clicking on the View Edit Streams Composition button. Through this dialog, you can add the stream's composition. In order to add heptane, select it from the list and double click on it. Note that you can create mixtures through this dialog by adding several components and adjusting their composition. However, you can also add pre-registered mixtures directly as well. Let's now click OK to return to the operating data dialog. Next, we need to specify the duration for this operation. Notice that there are several ways that the duration of this operation can be specified. For this example, we'll need to change the setup time to 5 minutes and the volumetric flow rate to 30 liters per minute. There are several other parameters that can be adjusted through the different tabs of the operations window. Let's briefly have a look at them. Through the volumes tab, the user can specify the maximum and minimum allowable working to vessel volume for this operation. Through the vent emissions tab, the user can specify which volatile organic compounds will be emitted, whether a sweep gas will be used, and what temperature the vent condenser should be set at. Through the labor tab, you can specify labor requirements and auxiliary utilities. Furthermore, through the scheduling tab, which is the rightmost tab, you can specify the start time and duration for an operation. For this charge, we need to specify some venting information, so let's switch to that tab. To specify venting, click on the venting box. Notice that stream S104, which is attached to the dedicated venting port, is selected by default for venting. Next, click on the emissions box and also specify that heptane will be emitted. Let's now click on the OK and Next Operation button. In this second unit operation, select stream S102 to charge 50 kilograms of component A. Furthermore, adjust the setup time to 5 minutes and the process time to 20 minutes. As for the rest of the tabs, keep the default values. Furthermore, regarding the scheduling, it's important to mention that all operations of a procedure are scheduled by default to start at the end of the previous operation, except for the first operation in the procedure, which is scheduled relative to the beginning of the batch. Let's click on the OK and Next Operation button. For this third charge, we'll need to select stream S103 to charge 40 kilograms of component B. Again, we need to adjust the setup time to 5 minutes and the process time to 30 minutes. Keep the default values for the rest and let's move on to the next operation. Notice that the Operating Conditions tab is different for this operation than it was for the charge operations. Also, two additional tabs are present. 
This includes the Fed Batch tab that contains available specification options for Fed Batch supply of reactants and a Reactions tab in which reaction parameters are specified. Starting with the Operating Conditions tab, let's first change the final temperature of our reaction to 50 degrees Celsius and the reaction time to 6 hours. Also, select Steam as the heat transfer agent by clicking on the Agent drop-down list and double-clicking on Steam. Furthermore, keep all other default values for this tab and let's now head on to the Reactions tab to specify reaction-related information. To enter the reaction stoichiometry, click on the Edit Stoichiometry button to bring up the Stoichiometry Balance dialog. On the right-hand side of the dialog, you can specify the reactants, which in this case will be A, and B, and on the left-hand side of the dialog you can specify the products, which will be C. Furthermore, select the molar option for the specification of the stoichiometric coefficients and keep the default unit molar coefficients for everything. Let's now click OK. In addition to the stoichiometry, we need to specify the extent of the reaction. For this example, set the extent of the reaction to 95%. Let's now move on to the transfer out operation. For transfer out operations, you need to select the transfer out stream and you also need to specify the amount you want to transfer out, which will be 100% for this example. Furthermore, as with all other operations, we need to specify the duration. In this example, we need to specify that the duration of the transfer out operation will depend on the filtration operation because we assume that we transfer and filter at the same time. To do that, we can use the option of set by master-slave relationship to specify that this operation will be a slave of another one. To set this up, click on the setup button and through the dialog that comes up, select P2 as our master procedure. Also, since P2 has multiple operations, select the filtration operation, filter1, as the master operation. This will ensure that the reactor will be considered as utilized during filtration, since the reactor will not be completely emptied until the filtration is complete. Let's now press OK to return to the operating conditions dialog. As for the rest of the tabs, keep the default values and click OK to return to the flowsheet. Now that we have initialized the first procedure, we need to proceed to initialize the operations of the second one. For that, right-click on the filter, select Operation Data, and then choose the first operation. For the purposes of this example, let's assume that reagents A and B are completely soluble in heptane, whereas the product C is virtually insoluble. Let's begin initializing this operation by specifying that 95% of product C will be removed from the feed stream and will remain in the filter. You can do this by selecting your component C and then specifying 95% removal. Furthermore, notice that you can specify cake dryness either based on loss on drying or cake porosity. This value will cause a portion of the heptane solvent and of soluble components A and B to be held in your wet cake. Let's change the loss on drying value to 35%. By specifying this amount, we are basically telling the program that only 65% of wet cake is the insoluble product C. Next, let's specify a filtration time of 3 hours. Let's keep all of the other parameters as they are, and let's adjust the scheduling for this operation. As I mentioned earlier, the first operation in any batch unit procedure is scheduled to start relative to the beginning of the batch. In order to accurately schedule your filtration, you will need to change the start time to be relative to the start of the transfer out operation in procedure P1. For that, I will choose the option relative to another operation in another procedure then I need to select my procedure P1 and finally choose the operation transfer to filter. Let's now click OK and next operation. For this cake wash operation we'll need to specify the stream that will provide the wash solvent so we select stream S106 and the stream that will remove the waste. Select stream S109 in this case. 
In addition, we need to specify the solvent that we will use for the wash. That will be heptane for this example. Also, there are three options for the washing stream. For this example, let's keep the third option and keep the default value of 3. Next, let's specify the wash time by selecting the option that is based on flux. Keep the default flux value. Also, notice that you have two options for the wash type. Their differences are described in detail in the SuperPro manual. Let's leave the displacement option for this example. Let's now click OK and Next Operation to initialize the transfer out operation. For this operation, let's select the transfer out cake stream. Furthermore, let's specify a setup time of 5 minutes and a process time of 30 minutes. We can now click OK to return to the flow sheet. At this point, you can click on the Solve Mass and Energy Balances button to perform the simulation. There are several ways to view material outputs. The first is by double-clicking on the stream you would like to display. In this dialog, you can see the stream's output and its composition. Furthermore, SuperPro Designer allows you to display stream information such as flow rate directly on your flow sheet. To do that, right-click on the stream and select Style from the context menu and choose Edit Style. Through this dialog, select the Display Info tag option. Notice that two new tabs appeared when I selected the option. Through the first tab, you can select the information you'd like to display. Through the second one, you can customize where the tag will be displayed. When we exit the dialog, you'll see that the info tag appears on the stream. Another way to view material and stream information within SuperPro Designer is by generating a table with the different streams. To do that, click on the Table Summary button. Then, on the gray area that appears at the bottom, right-click and select Edit Contents. Through this dialog, you can customize the information you'd like to display. Let's display all streams. The table is then displayed at the bottom and gives a nice overview of the stream contents. Furthermore, SuperPro Designer is equipped with various charts that give useful information on the process. One such chart is the Gantt chart. Let's bring up the Operations Gantt chart. Through this single batch Gantt chart, you can view your process at various levels of detail. The light brown bar represents your complete process, the dark blue bars represent procedures P1 and P2, and finally, the light blue bars represent operations. Notice how this chart gives you an overview of the process with respect to time. Also, you can view details such as the parallel execution of the transfer out operation in P1 and filtration in P2, as specified earlier for this example. Another useful chart that you can generate with SuperPro Designer is the Equipment Occupancy Chart. You can display multiple batches to your convenience and the chart helps you visualize equipment occupancy and aids in identifying bottlenecks. On the y-axis you have equipment items and on the x-axis you have time. Each color represents a different batch. For this example, the scheduling bottleneck is Reactor 101 as it has the longest occupancy and therefore determines the cycle time in between batches. SuperPro Designer also generates various reports that organize the outputs. Also, reports can be generated in different formats. Let's generate a report in the PDF format. To generate a report, you simply select it from the reports list. Here you can see the style of the report. This particular report includes overall process data, material requirements, overall component balances, and equipment contents. A detailed description of the different reports can also be found in the manual. This concludes part 2 of the SuperPro Designer tutorial videos. 
please remember to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can obtain more information on our tools.